Hi guys this is Hirasaki. This story is all about what if Naruto was in Justice League. Eh, for decades, he had traveled from one corner of the known universe to the other, searching for a way back to his home planet. But after nearly 100 years of fruitless efforts, even with his legendary stubbornness, Naruto grew weary. Now, he had to let it go. Before we start kindly like and subscribe to this channel, and look over the description box for the author of this amazing storyline. Welcome aboard. Chapter 21 A Perfect World A yawn came from his mouth and he tried to raise his arms and stretch, but he realized that he could not move one of them. Turning his head to see what was wrong, he realized why, a woman was sleeping with her head on his arm. He smiled as he brought a hand to her face and moved a lock of her black hair behind her ear. When he tenderly caressed her soft cheek with his thumb, her eyelids raised, revealing her baby blue eyes. Morning. He said. In response, the woman rolled on top of him and straddled his midsection. Morning. She said too and pressed her lips against his in a chaste kiss. Then, she laid on top of him, with her head on his chest, right below his chin. He brought his arms around her back and hugged her dearly. They had been together for more than a decade, but they had never gotten tired of each other. If anything, their love deepened with every passing day. Just cuddling like that in the morning brought them a feeling of fulfillment and peace. Little Thea woke up. Naruto said when his sensitive ears caught a particular sound coming from outside their bedroom. Watch, any moment now, she'll come bursting into our bedroom like a small hurricane. The woman in his arms laughed softly and said. He too chuckled because, as on cue, their bedroom's door was abruptly opened, and a young girl about twelve years old burst in full of energy. Mom. Dad. Wake up. Today is my graduation. She yelled in excitement. The little girl was a carbon copy of her mother. Long and straight black hair, fair skin and a pair of blue eyes sparkling with mischief. You little monkey, it's still too early for you to be so rowdy. Naruto lightly admonished but the girl just grinned in reply. She suddenly took flight and plopped herself on top of her parents. Delightful laughter came from her when her mother started play fighting against her for who was allowed to monopolize Naruto. He could only smile widely at the sight of his wife and daughter. Eventually however, little Thea rolled to the side exhausted, glaring at her victorious-looking mother. You'll see, I'll definitely defeat you one day. I'll defeat you and take daddy all for myself. Diana pinched her daughter's nose and giggled. You're still a few centuries too young for that. Now shoo and go take a shower. I'll make breakfast for you. The young girl winced. Hey! What's with that reaction? Diana said, her face aggrieved. It's all right, I'll prepare breakfast today. Naruto offered. Yay! Thea said and pumped her fist in the air before quickly flying away from the room. Thea! No flying in the house. Diana yelled after her but the little girl was long gone. She made a depressed face. Is my cooking really that bad? She asked after Thea left. Naruto chuckled and kissed her on the forehead. We all have things we're good at and things we can't do. It's proof that we're still human. Then, then, he stood up from the bed and unexpectedly swept her off her feet, taking her in his arms in a princess carry. She let out a small shriek of delight and she brought her arms around his neck. That morning, the couple needed a longer than usual time when they showered together. I'm finally a full-fledged Kunoichi. I got a great team too. I'm together with Uchiha Sarada and Sabaka Shinki. We're going to be the strongest team of Jinin ever. Even stronger than you and your team. Thea proclaimed full of conviction. I'm sure you will. Naruto said and patted her on the head, ruffling her hair and making her swat his hand away in annoyance. Dad. I told you to not touch my hair. A woman's hair is her life. A young boy wearing red war paint on his face sneered from the side. 
a shinobi will never go far when they care that much about their appearance. Look at Sarada, she's a true kunoichi. She doesn't care about her looks dash. But his survival instincts kicked in, and he suddenly broke into a sprint, both Thea and Sarada hot on his tail, intent on beating him up. They're as full of energy as ever, aren't they? A red-haired man in his late thirties said from the side. It was Gara. He had been the Kazekage of Sunagekir for almost ten years before he finally decided to retire. Upon passing the mantle to his successor, he moved to Kanoha to be closer to Naruto and to his sister, Temari, who had married and moved away to Kanoha many years before. Only Kankuro remained behind, acting as the new Kazekage's right-hand man. Naruto and Gara clasped their hands in a strong handshake. Are you free today? Diana asked. We decided to have a little party together with Sakura and Sasuke. You're more than welcome to join us. Gara looked pleasantly surprised. Definitely. ERM, initially it was supposed to be a small party, but somehow my mother found out about it. Now, besides us, the parents of the three genins, there are many more. There's also mom, dad, Sandane, Tsunade, Tsunade Bahan, and Ero Senin too. My mother-in-law will certainly not miss on the opportunity either. Also, Karama will be there too, of course. Naruto said apologetically but Gara only smiled. Naruto was his first friend, the person that had saved him from his darkness. Not just that, he even came after him to save his life when he got captured by the Akatsuki. Gara cared about him just as much as he cared about his two siblings and his adopted son, Shinki. It was late in the evening. The moon was already shining brightly in the sky, but that did not diminish the excitement and joy of the party taking place in the courtyard of the manor owned by the former fourth Hokage and his wife. Jiraiya-sensei still hasn't given up on wooing Tsunade-sama even after all these years. Fifty-something-years-old Namake's Minato said and chuckled as he watched the toad sage making doe eyes at a cold-looking slug princess. At his side, a ninety-year-old Sarutobi Hiruzen poured himself a cup of sake and let out a warm smile. Youth comes from the heart. Jiraiya will always be a young man in that regard. I have to say though, Minato, I'm quite surprised by your son. I never thought he would turn down the position of Hokage. Minato shrugged his shoulders helplessly. I know, right? As he grew up, he drove everyone crazy with his I'm going to be the Hokage one day lines. Naruto suddenly came from behind them and wrapped his arms around their shoulders. You two old men wouldn't happen to be gossiping about me like a pair of old women, right? The three of them shared a laugh together. Naruto also poured himself some sake and drank it all in a gulp. After I grew up, I realized that being the Hokage is far less exciting than I thought at first. You spend 99% of your time buried under paperwork. I chose to focus more on my family rather than on a boring career. See? Your son is smarter than you, Minato. A red-haired woman in her fifties said half-seriously, half-jokingly from the side. Despite her age, her, her hair was still very long and crimson red and, although time had left some marks on her face, it could be seen that she had been a very beautiful woman in the past. She was Naruto's mother, Kushina Uzumaki. You're absolutely right, Kushina. Minato said meekly, making both Naruto and Sarutobi laugh out loud. The leadership of the village is in good hands. Kakashi-sensei is a dependable man. He's a much better fit as a Hokage than I am. Naruto said. Besides, there are no more wars among the five great nations. Ever since we sealed Kagaya, we've been living in an era of peace. His heart was filled with content and with happiness whenever he looked at his wife and daughter. Furthermore, he could live his days in peace together with his parents, his grandfather figure, Sarutobi Hiruzen, his auntie Tsunade, his perverted mentor, Jiraiya, and his best friends, Gara and Sasuke. Diana was happier too, no longer stressed and tormented by responsibilities, and she could live together with her mother too, away from the oppression of the Olympian gods. What more could he ask from life? 
This is paradise. He thought as he watched everyone around him having a good time. Sasuke and Gara were playing a game of shogi, Jiraiya was trying to flirt with Tsunade, Sakura and Diana were chatting together with Hippolyta, and the three genin were having a mock fight against a bear-sized nine-tailed fox while Naruto, his parents, and Sandame were having a drink. But at that moment, he suddenly winced in pain as a strong migraine assaulted his brain. He dropped his cup of sake, spilling it all over his clothes. Naruto-chan, are you okay? Kushina asked suddenly worried. Naruto did not reply. In his mind, a rush of memories invaded his thoughts. Thoughts. It was exactly what happened when his shadow clones dispelled, and he received their memories. But he could not remember ever making a shadow clone that day, let alone so many shadow clones that they would cause him a migraine by dispelling all at once. In his mind, he could now see a dying planet with a race of yellow-skinned humanoids, all dead. Ruined cities, a destroyed nature, and a sky covered by a thick curtain of dark purple clouds. Nothing to worry about. Naruto replied eventually. I'll go to the bathroom to get myself cleaned up. He almost ran to the bathroom and splashed with cold water over his face. But when he looked in the mirror, he was startled. His hands involuntarily rose to touch his own face, tracing his whisker-like marks with his fingers. This isn't right. What is going on? The image he could see in the mirror was different from what he remembered. His reflection had bright golden hair, blue eyes and very thin whisker-like birthmarks. I used to look like that. But that was before I unsealed Karama from my body. He remembered that after unsealing Kyubi, the part of the bijou that been left inside of his body had fused with him which resulted in his eyes become red and slit, like that of a fox, his golden hair darkened to the point where it became a strawberry blonde and the marks on his face had become much thicker and darker. At that moment, he suddenly heard a chorus of cries coming from the courtyard. He got outside the house just in time to see the bright moon in the sky suddenly crack and shatter. No. This can't be happening. He shouted, his face livid. A massive rip in the space appeared above the courtyard. A pale white woman with horns on her head and long white hair stepped out of the rift. Her pupilless white eyes stared at the people below with hatred. She raised her hands and said. All killing ish bones. Time seemed to slow down to a crawl but despite his heightened senses and superhuman powers, Naruto found himself unable to react. Under his horrified eyes, he watched how bone spikes shot from the rabbit go goddess arms, impaling everyone below. To this day, it was still the deadliest technique that Naruto had ever witnessed in his long life. The moment that the bone spikes touched someone, their body crumbled into ash. They did not have time to even scream. He could only watch in terror how his daughter perished, turned into ash and scattered in the wind by the first wave of attacks. His body immediately burst with a brilliance of golden light and ten truth-seeking orbs appeared at his back. Enraged, he lunged at Kagaya screaming like possessed, but a rift appeared in the space, right in front of him, and teleported him to several miles away. He teleported back right away, but he fell on his knees in despair at the sight that greeted his eyes, all that remained of his loved ones were just a few mounds of ash. His wife, his daughter, his parents, his best friends, his sensei, his auntie everyone was dead. The moment that the rush of memories from his shadow clones had invaded his brain, Naruto realized that what he was experiencing at that moment was only an illusion. His parents had died a very long time ago, the day he was born. Sandame Hokage was assassinated by Orochimaru when he was a jinin and his sensei, Jiraiya, was killed by pain when he was 16. There was no way for them to be alive then. However, even despite knowing that in the depths of his heart, the pain he felt at that moment was not an illusion. Watching everyone he had ever loved die once more messed him up. In particular, his daughter's death hit him so hard that he felt physically ill. A powerful hand suddenly clenched on a mass of vine-like tentacles. Something like a shriek of pain came from the plant when it was abruptly yanked from the host that it had preyed upon. Its tentacles struggled to wrap around the arm that had grabbed it, trying to get back and possess his body, but with a squeeze of his fingers, 
the tentacle plant was squashed into a paste of green blood. Naruto, Naruto was still on his knees, his body shivering all over. His face was livid and his eyes were haunted. Everything had been just an illusion. But what he had felt in that illusion had been real. His love for Diana and his daughter, Thea, his feelings for his parents, and the despair at watching everyone else die they were like a molten hot rod piercing through his heart. As he stood on all fours, on his knees, the nails on his fingers started to grow and turned into claws, digging into the soil beneath. His strawberry blonde hair turned blood red and a haze of red and yellow chakra started seeping out of his body. But he reined his chakra back in. He was silent. There were no explosions of chakra, no crazy displays of power. But under his cold fury, all living beings in the vicinity became mute. Even the wind came to a standstill. Chapter 22 Massacre It was an enormous hall. He could barely make out its outer walls, but he could not see the ceiling. There were no windows and there were no lights either. Though he could not see his hand in front of his face, he could hear the collective breathing of a large group of living beings. Through his sage senses, he could feel there were thousands of them gathered in the hall. An orange-red flame bloomed in the palm of his hand. When his surroundings were revealed, he paled. Thousands of yellow-skinned humanoid beings were hanging from the ceiling in translucent fleshy cocoons. Tentacle-like plants, just like the one that had got the drop on him a few hours before, were wrapped around each of those Debstam inhabitants' neck, torso or face. It was a giant hive. It's just like back then. He was reminded of how the god tree had captured the entirety of the elemental nations, every living being, and encased them in cocoons, putting them into an eternal slumber. Just like the tentacle plants were, were doing to their victims. Each one of them was experiencing something no different than the infinite Tsukuyami that Madara had cast back in his homeworld. Sounds of teeth gnashing came from him, and his face became livid. A rage that his hands started shaking came over him. Veins were pulsating on his temples, and his breathing came out in gasps. He was hyperventilating. It was at that time that the sound of people talking reached his ears. His wildly beating heart slowed down, and he got a hold of his violent emotions. But his red, slit eyes shone with ferocity. Whoever did this? I'll rip them to shreds. I'll dash, I'll dash. He could not continue that thought. Just thinking about it made him see red in front of his eyes. How are the tests going? A massive humanoid being asked. He was bald, his skin was a dirty yellow color, and his eyes were completely red. His skin-tight purple costume showed off his incredibly muscular physique. We have successfully modified the genetic data of the Black Mercy. A man similar in stature and appearance to him answered. They looked like they were related. The difference came mostly in the outfit he was wearing. A blue and dark pink costume with a bright yellow symbol on his chest. It was none other than the Yellow Lantern Corps symbol. Previously, Black Mercy would have offered its victims a painless death, giving them the perfect life they've always dreamed of. However, I changed it. My yellow power ring gave me new insights that I have never thought about before. I made it so after tasting the sweetness of their version of paradise, their greatest fears would come to life. The emotional trauma would increase the speed at which the Black Mercy feeds on their psychic energy, eventually draining all the vitality from their body. The victims would die an agonizing death, worse than any physical torture could ever bring them. The two muscular yellow-skinned humanoids were none other than Mongol, and his son who carried the same name as him, Mongol the Younger. A, cru a cruel smile appeared on Mongol's face. Good. Good he said, repeating himself. They took Warworld from me. That lowly slave, Draga, that Kryptonian and the Justice League, I will pay them back for that humiliation tenfold. How sweet it will be to see them all bent on their knees in front of me, begging me to kill them. He broke into laughter. Similarly, Mongol the Younger laughed along with him. What about our other project? Mongol asked. My sister is dealing with it. Our fleet is almost ready. 
We are missing some personnel though. We have killed too many in the last pandemic. But they're just rubble. We could always get more slaves from another planet. Fear will keep them in line. His son replied and raised his fist to look at the yellow power ring on his middle finger. A human-looking man appeared on the illuminated platform that the son and father tyrants had been conversing on before. A fur-collared black cloak, crimson red hair, slit red eyes and dark, thick whisker-like marks on his face. It was none other than Naruto. Who are you? Mongol asked, alerted by his unexpected arrival. Instinctively, Mongol Jr. instantly conjured a sphere of yellow light around himself and his father. It was just in time to meet the newcomer's punch. Bang! The sound of glass shattering was heard and the yellow construct of light was smashed into shards of light, with Mongol and Mongol Jr. being violently thrown off the platform. It was you! Naruto screamed. The father and son duo quickly rose to their feet, but two hands suddenly smashed into their faces and grabbed them both by the head in a vice-like grip. Holding them by their face, he ran with them and smashed their heads into the thick outer walls of the hall, creating a large hole in it, and then jumped with them outside. A bolt of yellow light shot from Mongol Jr.'s power ring and exploded right into Naruto's chest, blasting him away from them and making him lose his grip on their faces. Who the hell are you? Mongol Jr. screamed. Five bloodied marks were left on his face from how hard Naruto's fingers had dug into his skin. Naruto looked at the bleeding bruise left by the blast of yellow light on his chest. It had destroyed his cloak and combat suit and scrapped his skin, almost revealing the ribs below. A deranged grin appeared on his face. He launched himself at them again and his fist smashed against the new sphere of yellow light that Mongol Jr. had conjured with his power ring. The construct of light once more could not resist even one of his punches and shattered in a spectacle of lights. But Mongol the Older threw an explosive punch at Naruto, striking him in the face. The blow threw him back almost like a cannonball, destroying dozens of tree trunks and creating a line of broken trees in the dense jungle around the hall hosting the hive. Guards! What the hell are you doing? Mongol screamed and, at his call, Dozens upon dozens of tall and thin yellow-skinned humanoids came from the large hall carrying blasters and plasma swords with them. Naruto sat up from the crater he had been smashed into like a zombie. He laughed. It was a screamed, insane laughter. He sprang from his place, making a beeline towards Mongol and his son once more. Mongol the Younger conjured a construct of yellow light in the form of a cannon barrel, and an enormous blast of light impacted Naruto and exploded in a shower of light along with his blood. But Naruto only laughed, a mad look in his eyes. Laser beams were shot by the henchmen of Mongol and a part of them also closed in, slashing at him with their pla plasma swords. He ignored them all and launched himself at Mongol and his son again. Bloodlust was rolling off of him in waves. What the hell is your problem? What do you want? Mongol screamed, inwardly starting to feel afraid. Despite having a yellow lantern in his son and an army at his side, an impending feeling of death seemed to loom over him. It filled him with trepidation. Naruto suddenly disappeared, greatly alarming the two Mongol and the army of henchmen around them. Mongol suddenly felt his breath leaving his lungs and his feet leaving the ground. Mongol Jr. could only watch as their enemy's lariat almost beheaded his father and hurled him into the distance spinning like a top. A huge hatchet of yellow light came from his power ring and slashed at Naruto's back opening up a wound gushing with blood. Fucking animal! Mongol Jr. screamed and raised his hatchet of yellow light to hack down once more, but Naruto teleported right in front of his face and grabbed him in a painful chokehold with a hand and slammed him into the ground. The ground shattered and an immense crater was formed. He raised his other arm and a long dagger appeared in it before he stabbed into Mongol Jr.'s hand, the hand holding the yellow power ring. A howl of pain came from Mongol Jr., but only moments later, Naruto also screamed, with laughter. The plasma sword of one of the henchmen had impaled him through the chest from the back. 
Blood spurted from his mouth as one of his lungs was perforated and burnt off by the heat sword. It was as if he did not even register the pain. Or more, like he took pleasure in it. A backhanded slap at his back made the henchman that had stabbed him through with his plasma sword burst into a shower of gore and blood. The rest of the henchmen holding swords immediately drew away in terror, but death reaped their lives before they knew it as a forest of stone spikes abruptly burst from the ground below their feet. Dozens of henchmen were slaughtered in the blink of an eye, their death throws cries a macabre symphony of death. The grievous wounds that he had received began to heal like a miracle, even the burnt and cauterized hole in his chest closed up. If it was not for his ruined combat suit, one would not believe he had been mortally wounded just a few moments before. The deranged smile slowly receded from his face. The glimmer of insanity in his red eyes subsided. His rage was nowhere near abetted though. His hand wrapped in a transparent blade of wind, he slashed at Mongol Jr.'s arm, severing it from the elbow along with his yellow power ring. A scream of despair and pain came from the yellow lantern. His massive body convulsed violently, and he punched and kicked with his remaining limbs in desperation, but the previously seemingly vulnerable body of Naruto was now like steel, Mongol Jr.'s powerful hits not even causing a bruise. Naruto's vice-like grip on his neck was unshakable. He started to drag the massive body of Mongol Jr. after him, towards the place where Mongol the father lay after the lariat to the neck had almost taken his life. Mongol the father tried to stand to his feet, but he could not muster any strength. To his horror, he realized that he could not feel his body from the neck below. Naruto's lariat had paralyzed him. A sound of slow footsteps reached his ears, every stomp on the ground sounding like the limbs of a watch measuring the remaining time from his life. Why are you doing this? How have I wronged you? I've never even seen you in my life. Mongol screamed when Naruto came in his sight, dragging his son by the neck. Naruto threw Mongol Jr. to the ground roughly. The yellow lantern scrambled to get up as quickly as he could but a blade of lightning pierced through his, his thigh, pinning him to the ground. Tell me why are you doing this? Why are you killing us? Mongol Jr. also screamed in desperation. Normally, it was he who brought despair onto others. He was chosen as a yellow lantern for a reason. Mongol Jr. had obtained his yellow power ring by killing its previous owner. But now, he was the one tasting what fear and despair felt like. Naruto spoke to Mongol the father who was paralyzed on the ground. You gave me everything. And then you took it away. My parents, my mentor, my wife, my daughter, my family. I watched them all die in front of my eyes. I'm going to do the same for you. Two shadow clones appeared next to him, and they went to the paralyzed Mongol. They grabbed him roughly by the head and their fingers pried his eyes wide open, making it impossible for him to close his eyes or look away. It's insurance. To make sure you'll watch every single moment of how I'm going to torture your son to death. It was carnage. Dozens of yellow-skinned soldiers were impaled on gigantic spikes of stone, their blood making a river below. Mongol and Mongol Jr. were unrecognizable. Dismembered, their eyes gouged out and chunks of flesh ripped out of their bodies or incinerated. Even then, the massacre was not over. Hours later, several hundred corpses littered Mongol's military base. Every single one of his henchmen was killed. The only people left alive were the ones being held by the hive of Black Mercy organisms. Naruto laid on a boulder with his elbows on his knees and his face buried in his palms. Until the illusion of Black Mercy, he had never seen his loved ones actually die. He had not seen his mother and father die. He had not witnessed Sandame Hokage's assassination, and he had not seen his mentor's death at the hands of pain either. The first time that he saw someone apparently die was when he thought that Hinata was killed, and he went berserk to the point that QB took over him and broke the seal. The second time was when Niji sacrificed himself to protect Hinata during the war. But Naruto had not been, been particularly close to either Niji or Hinata. They had been just friends, just two of the large group of people that he viewed as friends. Arosenin. Bahan.
gg. Only now, when it was all over and his rage had died down, grief surfaced. Heavy and bitter tears started rolling down his scarred cheeks as he said their names. Ka Chan. Tu San. Thea. Diana. He knew it had been only an illusion. However, while only a few hours passed in reality, he had lived for more than ten years inside the dream given to him by the Black Mercy. His feelings for everyone there had been real. Surrounded by piles of corpses from all sides and a thick scent of blood staining the air, he cried alone for a long time. Great Athena! You are okay! Was the first thing Diana exclaimed when her lightwave device rang and she answered the incoming call. On the other side of the video call was Naruto. When that thing grabbed you, I dash, I thought the worst. I dash. She stopped to recollect herself and get a hold of her growing anxiety. But she realized that Naruto was eerily silent. Furthermore, he was wearing his white fox mask as well something that he never did while talking to her. It's good to see you, Diana. Naruto said eventually, his voice choked with untold emotions. He could feel that Wonder Woman wanted to ask what was wrong with him, but he did not trust himself to not break if he talked about it with her then. So, he said to quickly change the subject. Where are you? Can you reach out to Green Lantern? Wonder Woman naturally noticed his actions. Though she was dying to make sure that he was all right, she stopped her urges to press him for more information. Green Lantern is with me. Flash, Starfire and Supergirl are with me too. We are in the middle of a space warp. We should arrive in the Cygnus constellation in a matter of minutes. Anticipating his question, she explained. When you were, you were attacked and fell unconscious, I feared the worst. I dash. Flash all of a sudden butted in the frame and said. She was so worried that she ran straight to John and asked him how to get to the Cygnus system. We didn't even know where that was at first. Flash was pushed out of the frame and two girls, a blonde and a redhead, popped in instead. We had to ask Batman to hack this thing, and then Dr. Fate to trace your location. You caused us so much trouble, honestly. Supergirl said as if she was aggrieved, but she was smiling. That tentacle thing didn't do any weird things to you, right? Starfire asked too. Starfire. Diana yelled from the background and the camera shook as they fought for who to hold it. Eventually, Diana won the small scuffle and handed the lightwave device to Green Lantern. Seeing the dark-skinned man appear in the frame, Naruto said. Tell the Guardians that the mission is complete. Though there were some complications. They should send a few dozen Green Lanterns at least and someone well-versed in medicine, magic or mind arts. There are several thousand people parasitized by Black Mercy plants. A huge hive. Black Mercy you say? Green Lantern could not help crying out. Yes. Black Mercy that was genetically engineered to give nightmares to the host instead of a beautiful dream. I did not want to risk taking the plants off of the people myself. I'm not a medic and I'm not experienced in matters like these. I don't know what would happen if I were to suddenly take them off. In order to prove his words, Naruto turned the camera towards his surroundings. Thanks to a shadow clone illuminating the darkness-filled hall with a fire technique, Green Lantern was able to see what was there. My god, god. He said in shock. He was not the only one with that reaction. The other four peeking over his shoulders at the screen were similarly appalled at the sight of thousands of people hanging from the ceiling in fleshy cocoons and with a mass of tentacles wrapped around their neck, torso and face. The ones orchestrating this are dead. We'll talk more about it once you arrive here. Now let me speak with Diana. Green Lantern gave Wonder Woman the lightwave device and, judging by the lack of noise in the background, she went to a different room of the spaceship. I've made you worry. I'm sorry. He said softly. The princess shook her head. No, more importantly, I'm relieved to see you are all right. Taking a look at his still covered by mask face, she asked. Are you okay? 
Luckily, the mask covered the haunted expression he had on his face then. After a long pause, he said. I'm better now. I can see you. The you are alive part was left unsaid. Chapter 23 Reunion His hands went through a quick sequence of hand seals that ended in a tiger seal. His chest inflated, and then a serpentine dragon of fire came out of his mouth. Though it was made of fire, one would be tempted to think it was alive when it let out a roar that shook the atmosphere. Next to him, a shadow clone went through a different series of hand seals, one that ended with a bird seal. His chest also inflated, and a cyan dragon of pressurized wind came out from his mouth. The two serpentine dragons roared as they coiled around each other. But fire always held an advantage over the wind. The cyan dragon was devoured by the red dragon, making the flaming dragon grow to more than three times its previous size. It was an over 200 feet long serpentine dragon of fire. Under Naruto's control, the fire dragon lunged at the jungle surrounding the military base below. The trees, the rocks, the hundreds of corpses belonging to Mongols' army, and the blood pooling on the ground everything was melted or evaporated. On Naruto's shoulder, a nine-tailed fox cub alternated between watching the destruction and looking at him. After he finished killing all of Mongols' henchmen, Naruto contacted him and told him to come down. How did that plant even sneak up on you? Your sage senses should have detected any living being for miles around you. The fox said eventually. I was careless. Naruto answered in a subdued voice. Kyuubi sighed. What kind of shinobi or bounty hunter lets a damned plant sneak up on him? Ha, let me guess, it's because of Diana, isn't it? You were talking to her and stopped paying attention to your surroundings. Honestly, you're like a little kid. The following silence confirmed the fox's words. A mixed look appeared in his red eyes. On one hand, he wanted to berate Naruto for messing up like that, but, on the other hand, he could see how disturbed he was even despite the mask hiding his face. After a short while, Naruto extinguished the giant flaming dragon. For hundreds of feet around the military base, everything had been turned into ash and cinders. There was no trace of corpses or blood or the previous battle at all. Due to the immense heat from before, the already cloudy sky had become covered by black clouds and a torrential downpour followed. Naruto took the fox from his shoulder into his arms and hugged him to his chest. Through his negative emotion sensing, Kyuubi could feel the tumult of negative feelings in his heart at that moment. So, he did not try to get out of his embrace. A screen of chakra was conjured from Naruto's hands, shielding the fox in his arms from the rain pouring from above. But he did not create one for himself too. He let the cold and dirty rain batter his bloodied body. On that dying planet, even the rain was polluted. After passing through the blanket of purple clouds covering the entirety of the planet, the five members of the Justice League were finally able to see the world below. They were above a strange-looking jungle, one that was in the process of withering. An unhealthy purple hue was shining on the leaves, trunks and branches of the trees. Following the coordinates given to them by Naruto, they arrived at the large military base in that jungle. The wide ring of ash surrounding the base made it look very eye-catching from above. The javelin landed not far from the place where Naruto stood with Kyuubi in his arms. What in the world happened here? Jon Stewart was the first to speak after he came out from the javelin. Oh man, it rains with cats and dogs out there. I think you can handle the situation by yourself, right? You don't need me to come out too, do you? Flash said in a hopeful voice, but he was suddenly pushed from behind with a force he had not expected. Taken by surprise, he was thrown out of the spaceship, and he fell flat on his face on the ground. Loud giggles came from behind. Kara, that wasn't nice at all. Starfire reprimanded though her face looked like she was struggling not to laugh. I didn't mean to push him that hard. Supergirl said half apologetically, but she was not fooling anyone with the large grin on her face. The two girls came out of the javelin too, but they were flying to avoid getting in contact with the mud. 
At that moment Flash also sat up from the ground with wet ash and mud all over his suit. The only saving grace was that he was wearing a transparent breathing mask which shielded his face from being dirted too. Apart from Green Lantern, the rest of them were all wearing breathing masks as a precaution against the toxic environment. Supergirl and Starfire started to laugh out loud at the sight of Flash looking like a pig that had rolled in the mud. But their copious giggles turned into shrieks when Flash's two arms transformed into two whirlwinds and the two girls were splattered with mud and ash from head to toes, just like him. Flash! You'll pay for this! The girls yelled. In the next moment, a full-on mud fight broke between the three of them. Them. Will you three stop acting like brats? Green Lantern shouted in irritation. Flash, you're supposed to be older and more mature than that. They're the one that started it. The speedster retorted, but he knew that Green Lantern was quite angry at that moment and did not push the limit of his patience. And you too. We didn't come here on a vacation. We have a mission to accomplish. You don't get to joke around and play in the field. He shouted at the two teenage girls. Starfire made herself small and looked down. I'm sorry. She said meekly. In contrast, Supergirl crossed her arms in front of her chest and grumbled. Sheesh, lighten up a little, it's not the end of the world. While the four of them were bickering back and forth like that, Wonder Woman came out of the spaceship too and flew to the boulder where Naruto and Kyuubi were sitting. She stopped in front of him with a worried look on her face when she took in his appearance. Usually, he wore a black combat suit and a fur-collared cloak on top, coupled with his ANBU-style white fox mask, he would give off the impression of a mysterious and seasoned mercenary. But in the present, he was far from that. He was bare-chested, covered in mud and coagulated blood that the rain had not managed to wash off. He looked like he had been through a war. I'd hug you but dash Naruto started to say, but Wonder Woman suddenly closed the distance and took him in her arms. Your suit will get dirty. He finished in a small voice. Wonder Woman's new costume consisted of a pure white cloak, white skorts and a white top with a golden owl symbol on its chest along with the golden armored parts such as the greaves, the pauldrons, the tiara, tiara and the earwings ornaments. But at his words, her response was to hug him tighter instead of letting go. It doesn't matter. I missed you, Naruto. No longer hesitating, he brought his arms around her and hugged her back too. The white fox mask dispersed in a shower of lights and he buried his face in the side of her neck, in her hair. Wonder Woman did not possess any supernatural abilities to see the secrets lurking into other people's hearts, but how could she not know what he was feeling at that moment? He was hugging her as if he was afraid she would disappear if he let go. She rubbed the back of his head soothingly, just like her mother used to do to her when she was younger. He melted at her gentle caress. I missed you too, Diana. In truth, about one month passed since Naruto left the earth, but for the two of them it felt like much longer. On the side, Starfire and Supergirl were about to approach them too, but Green Lantern raised a hand and shook his head. Don't butt in, let them have their moment. He looks like he needs it. After a long time, Naruto reluctantly broke the hug. Diana involuntarily smiled at the needy look on his face and brought a hand to his face, pinching one of his scarred cheeks. Naruto leaned into her touch and raised his hand, putting it on top of hers. Then, he turned his head and lightly kissed her hand. The fox glared at them with an annoyed look on his face and a low growl came out of his throat. He did not like being ignored. Naruto and Diana both looked at him at the same time, and they chuckled. She bent down and took the tiny fox cub in her arms. It's good to see you too, Karama. She said with a giggle. Kyuubi let out a condescending sniff, but did not put up a front for too long once, once the princess started to scratch a particularly pleasant spot on his back. He became potty in her hands. It was at that moment that the other four members of the Justice League chose to close in and start a conversation. Good to see you're all right, man. But dang, they sure did a number on you, didn't they? 
Flash said as he looked at Naruto's ruined clothes and at all the coagulated blood on his body. Ah, this isn't my blood. Mostly. But what the hell happened to you all? Naruto said when he saw Flash, Starfire and Supergirl covered in mud from head to toes. It's his fault. Slash it's their fault. The speedster and the two girls yelled at the same time and pointed at the other accusatorily. Naruto and Wonder Woman chuckled. How have you been, Coriandar? Are the Earthlings treating you well? The redhead grinned happily and flew at Naruto with her arms wide open, grabbing him in a bear hug. Naruto patted her head while looking at Wonder Woman awkwardly. The princess just smiled at his discomfort. I'm happy to see you are fine. When I heard that a tentacle monster attacked you, I thought dash. Naruto flicked her forehead making her yelp in slight pain. Get your head out of the gutter. Naruto scolded before giving Supergirl a mean, pointed look. You're the one that thought her weird things, aren't you? I don't know what you're talking about. Supergirl said with a large grin on her face. She came to Naruto with her arms wide too. Don't I get a hug too? No hugs for nasty perverts, Naruto said. Hey. I resent that. Out of everyone present there, Green Lantern was the only one who still did not have a speck of mud, ash or blood on him. Coated in the green light coming from his power ring, his uniform was in pristine condition. The other Green Lantern should arrive in about 20 minutes. Tell me what happened in the meantime. Jon Stewart said. After Naruto told him the information he had acquired and what had transpi transpired, a complex look appeared on Green Lantern's face. We've come in contact with Mongol before. He used to rule Warworld, a weaponized planet. He captured strong beings from all over the galaxy and forced them to fight in an arena to the death. Superman was captured and forced to fight like that too. We were the ones that dethroned him. I thought that his former subordinates would execute or imprison him. I didn't think he'd be plotting something like this in the dark. Naruto shrugged his shoulders. That's what happens when you don't pull the weeds from their roots. No matter how many times you cut them, as long as they are still alive, they will grow back. And you'll start the whole thing all over again. Oh well. You guys do you. I'm not gonna lecture you on how to run things. By the way, I extracted some information from Mongol and his son before they died. You mean to say you tortured them for information? Green Lantern said bluntly. Ma, ma, don't sweat the small stuff. Naruto said and waved a hand. Apparently, the reason for this planet's ruined nature and environment is that they've been working on transforming Debstam into a new warworld. But they fucked up when they messed around with the planet's core. What about the four green lanterns that died in this sector? Jon Stewart asked. Mongol's son murdered them. He was a yellow lantern. Probably quite strong for your standards. The way that Green Lantern squinted at his words was almost comical. You'll probably want to notify your superiors that Mongol also has a daughter. She has an entire fleet under her command. If what Mongol said before dying is true, she's planning on starting an invasion soon. As for where I have no idea. That's for you to find out and deal with it. When they heard the contents of Naruto and Green Lantern's conversation, the previously bubbly Supergirl and Starfire toned down their upbeat attitude and Flash became more serious too. As Green Lantern had told them before, that was not a place where they could play around. around. And that feeling was cemented for good when they followed Naruto inside and saw the huge hive holding trap thousands of living beings in fleshy cocoons. Whoa, that dude looks like a meatball. Kyuubi said in amazement at the sight of a particular member of the Green Lantern Corps. Look, there's a squirrel too. Naruto said with a chuckle. Over 20 Green Lanterns were working together with Jon Stewart and the other four members of the Justice League to cut the fleshy cocoons of the hive open and free the trapped people from it. Wonder Woman was using a sword to cut the cocoons open, Supergirl was using her heat vision while Flash and Starfire were carrying the people outside of the military base. 
Naruto approached the green lantern that looked like he was in charge of everyone there. It was a very tall and muscular humanoid being with pink skin, pig-like face and tusks. First time I actually see a pig man. The universe sure is large. Naruto inwardly thought. He did not judge him nor did he laugh at him. He had seen all kinds of people before. To him, be they humans or other species, it did not matter their appearance as long as he could come to an understanding with them after all, his closest business partner for decades had been a rat man. You're not going to take the back mercy plants from around their necks. He asked when he saw that the rescued people were not being freed by the tentacle-like plants. The orc-like green lantern shook his large head and said. Freeing them from the plants is easy. You just have to pull the plants off of them, and it's done. But who knows for how long they've been subjected to the illusion of the Black Mercy. It would be not surprising if everyone here went insane after being snapped back to reality. reality. So we're going to take everyone to OA. Mother Mercy will help them preserve their mental health. Mother Mercy? Naruto asked suspiciously. The Green Lantern looked like he was debating in his mind whether to tell him or not. Mother Mercy is the progenitor of these plants. She is a Green Lantern too. Although Naruto was back to wearing his white fox A and B U mask, the Green Lantern noticed he was startled. Mother Mercy is an empath, with great telepathic powers. She created the Black Mercy with a pure intent in mind. She wanted to offer the terminally ill people a moment of happiness before their death. The original plants would give the terminally ill people the experience of living a perfect life before their death, letting them experience happiness. Then, the people would die painlessly, with a smile on their face. Earthlings have a saying, the road to hell is paved with good intentions, Naruto murmured. Well, it was only after creating them that she realized the potential for harm that her children possessed. But is that not the same with everything else in the universe? Powers, abilities, tools, skills whether they are evil or not will be decided by what are they being used for. The Green Lantern said. By the way, I'm Kilowog. Pleased to meet you. I've heard many things about you before. Naruto grabbed Kilowog's outstretched hand and shook it. Pleased to meet me? Didn't y'all paint a target on my back? I'm a universal level threat, aren't I? He said with a laugh. Kilowog shrugged his shoulders. That is the Guardians. Personally, I admire your work. Especially what you did in the Vega system. I never agreed with the Guardians' decision to ban us from acting in the Vega system and letting the Psions, the Psions do whatever atrocities they pleased. And I'm not the only one, other Green Lanterns were opposed to it as well. But in the end, we are all loyal to the core. We do what the Guardians tell us to do. However, I give respect where respect is due. You are a man worthy of respect, Caterpillar. And you helped us with this matter too. You have avenged our four comrades' deaths as well. Um, wow. I didn't see that coming. Naruto said, his voice betraying how surprised he was. He had not expected a Green Lantern of all beings to pay him homage like that. One hour later, the squad of Green Lantern made a huge bubble of green light and took flight with the rescued people in tow, leaving the planet. Naruto had not just watched while everyone worked. Although there were thousands of people trapped, with the help of his shadow clones in addition to the group of Green Lanterns, it took a very short time to free everyone from the hive. Covered in mud from head to toes the torrential rain had not stopped even after two hours flash, Starfire and Supergirl plopped themselves at the entrance of the javelin tiredly. As for Green Lantern, he was already inside the ship, starting up the engines of the spaceship. How about that little vacation now? Naruto asked Wonder Woman. Her face brightened when heard his words. You mean it? But of course. Didn't I say that we'd go on a small holiday after I'm done with this mission? There was a small shriek of delight that came from Diana at his words and, in a rush of excitement, she hugged him and pressed a quick kiss on his lips. Did she just? Flash said, his mouth agape. 
Starfire and Supergirl looked at each other amazed too. They had never seen Wonder Woman acting like that before. She was a serious, no-nonsense type of woman. She rarely joked and she never acted in an unladylike fashion. She acted like a warrior in battle and a princess outside of it. Flash, in particular, was the most surprised because he had known Wonder Woman woman for almost two years already yet that was the first time that he had seen her act that girly. He dressed his voice uncomfortably. ERM, you're not coming back with us? He asked. Tell Martian Manhunter that I'll take a few days off dash. A week Naruto supplemented. A week. Diana agreed and gave Naruto a wet kiss on his cheek. Seeing that Flash looked like he wanted to say something more, Wonder Woman added. We'll be back in about one week for sure. We want to spend the Christmas together, on Earth. Turning towards Naruto, she asked, her eyes slightly narrowed, We will spend Christmas together, right? In response, Naruto lightly pinched her nose, greatly enjoying how her face scrunched up in annoyance. His cheeks were stretched by a large grin. Just get a room you two already. Supergirl blew her top from the side. Everyone started laughing at her outburst, Supergirl herself too. The big bad wolf dash. Fox Diana corrected. Is kidnapping the princess and holding her captive for a while, Naruto said with a chuckle, and then he unexpectedly swept the Amazon princess of her feet and took her in a princess carry. Diana's face lit up in an interesting shade of red, but she brought her hands around his neck and let herself be held. She was not quite used to being treated like an actual princess, but she did not dislike it. Not one bit. Naruto could not take his eyes off her face. Seeing her embarrassed but happy expression made his stomach churn strangely. Gah. She's too adorable. Completely ignoring the other three who were staring at them, Naruto teleported, teleported himself and Diana away, leaving them without as much as a goodbye. The moment they came out of the body flicker movement, Naruto instantly took her lips in a passion-filled kiss. When they parted, they were both breathless. This gapmo of yours is bad on my heart. Naruto said with a faked look of pain on his face. I want to hold you, kiss you, and never let you go. Though her face was flushed, Diana said coquettishly. What stops you from doing just that? She smiled in triumph when Naruto did what he was told and pressed his lips against hers hungrily. Still holding the kiss, she maneuvered herself in his arms, changing her position from being held in a princess carry to wrapping her long legs around his midsection, squishing her breasts against his chest. His hands naturally went to her large ass and squeezed her butt cheeks, making her squeal in their kiss in delight. When they parted from the kiss, they rested their forehead against each other and softly rubbed their noses together. They continued to exchange small pecks and whisper sweet nothings to each other. I missed holding you like this. He said and pecked her. It's been only one month, silly. She said but despite her words, she took his lips in a kiss too, making a wet smooch sound. Naruto involuntarily bit his lower lip at the sight of her red and full, ripe lips. Her white and beautiful teeth were revealed when she smiled knowingly at his action. I missed you. He said again. I missed you more. She whispered. But you said it's been only one month, didn't you? He countered. She bit the tip of his nose in response, making him shake his head to escape. She giggled and delighted him, but she let out a cute cry when he suddenly fought back and attacked the tender flesh of her neck with a kiss. Not fair. That's dash, that's cheating. She stammered and started struggling to get out of his arms. But with a hand on her butt and another on the small of her back, she could not go anywhere. She was trapped in his strong arms. Era, 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 did I find a weak spot? What is this I wonder? He paused his actions and said with a grin. That's a horrible pun, ah. Stop it. Wonder Woman began to say, but let out another cute shriek when his teeth sunk in the skin of her neck and started to suck on it. From one of the surrounding trees on the side, Kyuubi looked at them with a good grief look on his face. 
these two really are idiots. Both of them. What if I was an enemy trying to sneak up on them? For the two lovebirds, it was like the outside world ceased to exist. Being apart from each other from one month not only that it did not make their passion fade, it fanned its flames even harder than before. Kyuubi let out an aggrieved sigh, but he ended up smiling. Through his negative sensing emotions, he could feel that the previous storm of darkness in Naruto's heart had completely vanished. His brain now filled with the love hormone, it was as though Naruto had completely forgotten about the trauma he had been left with by the Black Mercy. At that moment, only the Amazon princess existed in his mind. In the end, the fox cub closed his eyes and curled himself in a ball of fur on the branch of a tree, falling into a half-asleep state, ignoring the two idiots flirting below. He only extended his senses to their surroundings, keeping his mind's eye active to spot any would-be threats. Chapter 24 Forever Semi-darkness, a dark sky, purple-tinted vegetation, and a withering jungle, on a dying planet. It was a desolate scenery, reeking of death. But for a particular man and woman, it was as if they were in the middle of a walk in a park. With their hands linked together and a pair of silly grins on their faces, the two of them could not take their eyes off each other. The man in question was of an average height and his haggard and bloodied appearance made him look rather pitiful. In contrast, the woman holding his hand looked very different. Though her white clothes were also stained by blood and dirt, one could tell from a glance that she was royalty. She looked like a warrior princess. They were none other than Naruto and Wonder Woman. Unlike other times, instead of sitting in his usual place on Naruto's shoulder, this time around Kyuubi was curled up on Wonder Woman's shoulder, basking in the comforting aura that she was unconsciously emitting due to Goddess Artemis' blessing. I have to take a shower. Urgently. My whole body feels sticky and itchy. He said. You have a shower in your ship? Diana asked curiously. I even have a bathtub. Naruto said and chuckled. My ship is basically my home. Seeing as I spend most of my days on the ship, I equipped it with everything I need to live decently. I also have a fully equipped kitchen though it's not big. A bedroom and a decent living room too. I didn't get the chance to see the inside but your ship didn't strike me as being that big. It's like what? About 150 feet long? Diana said. If you exclude the space occupied by the engine room and the control room, the remaining space is enough to fit in a small apartment. It's more than enough for a guy and a fox to live in. Wonder Woman turned her head to the side and let out a silent but long yawn. Ah, I'm beat. She said. Sorry. Naruto muttered. When he had called her earlier that day, she had been sleeping. Not only that he had disturbed her sleep, but he had also made her worry, and she flew to half a galaxy away because she was afraid for his safety. But Diana smiled at him and lightly squeezed his hand. It was nothing. As long as you are all right, that's all that matters. She stopped her walk and came in front of him. You are all right, yes? She remembered that when she got out of the javelin, Naruto took her in his arms, and he did not want to let her go for a long time. I dash. Naruto, Naruto started but he did not continue speaking. Because of his happiness at seeing Diana and having her in her arms, he had momentarily been distracted from what he had been through but now that a bit of time passed, he was reminded of it. Let's not talk about depressing stuff now. He said and gave her a smile. She brought her hand up to his face and gently caressed her scarred cheeks. I don't want to push you. But just so you know, whenever you feel like wanting to talk about it, I'll always be here for you. He closed his eyes and leaned into her caress. Thank you. He said and took her hand into his. The rest of the walk was quiet, the two of them only exchanging looks and smiles. Um, Naruto? Wonder Woman called him out in a hesitating voice. Yes? Perhaps you can lend me some of your clothes for the night? She was looking to the side, her eyes not quite daring to meet his. Naruto brought a hand to his chest, making a posture as though he was feeling pain. 
You're doing it on purpose, aren't you? Trying to kill me with your cuteness, aren't you? I it's not what you think. Wonder Woman protested. I just came in a rush and I don't have a change of clothes, because I didn't think I'd be staying over. That's all. Don't misunderstand. The more she spoke, the more flustered she became. By the time she finished her words, a healthy pink rose from her neck to her face, lightly coloring her otherwise pale cheeks. To Naruto, her flustered and embarrassed expression was too much. It was a critical hit. Crap, why is she so cute? His mind involuntarily went again over what she said. When he pictured her dressed only in one of his oversized t-shirts and a pair of panties, his face became hot too. Both red-faced, Naruto and Diana could not look at each other. I'll go pre I'll prepare you the bath. Naruto said and scurried away from the ship's living room. Now that she was left alone in the room, Wonder Woman dropped all the pretense and buried her face in the palms of her hands. But when she put her hands down, a determined expression appeared on her face. I won't let him always get the better of me. When Naruto returned from the bathroom, just like her, he looked like he had also regained his composure in the meantime. I ran the water, you're good to go. Thank you. She said and, as she passed by him, she stopped to give him a kiss on the cheek. He was still grinning in satisfaction a few seconds later when Diana looked back and said over her shoulder. You can join me, you know? Saying that, she removed her long white cloak and she let it fall on the floor of the ship. From the corner of her eye, she could see that he was looking at her wide-eyed, his mouth ajar. She even caught the movement of his Adam's apple when he swallowed his saliva. Ah, this is so embarrassing. She thought to herself and no longer looked back at him for Naruto to not see that her face was boiling. It was one thing to exchange kisses and hugs with her boyfriend, and a completely different thing to invite him to bathe together with her and entice him like that by stripping off her clothes in front of him. Walking towards the bathroom, she was fully committed to giving him a show, stripping one article of armor at a time. She was in the middle of taking off her shoulderless white top when a gale of wind came from behind and Diana suddenly found herself pressed flat against the door of the room. A pair of strong arms wrapped around her spelt waist, and she felt a particularly rigid mound pressing against her from behind. You little minx, do you have any idea what you're doing to me? Naruto rasped in her ear, his voice rough with desire. With her breasts squished and her face turned to the side and pressed against the door, Wonder Woman had never been dominated like that by a man. I think, I think I have an idea. Something down there feels very hard. She said suggestively and she pushed back with her ass against him for more emphasis. At her words, he nearly came undone right there and then. He let out a grunt and he ground himself against her, pushing her even harder against the wall. Wait, don't touch me there. Wonder Woman suddenly cried out when his hand sneaked around her waist and went between her legs. But when his fingers reached her special spot, all her resistance vanished and she started to grind back against him, matching his movements with hers. It was only a few moments later that the pent-up sexual tension from before reached the peak in them both and they came undone. You're so what I can feel it through the fabric. At his words, her knees trembled and her teeth sunk deeply into her plush lower lip. Breathing out heavily, the two stood in the same position, with him pressing her face first against the door and tried to recompose themselves. Here I am trying to hold myself back and let things run slow but... I'm just a man. I won't be able to hold back for much longer if you keep tempting me like that. Naruto said with bated breath. What if I don't want it slow? What if I want you to go hard? It had taken all her Amazonian courage for Wonder Woman to say something that raunchy, but the effect was immediate. She was roughly turned around and she did not have a chance to even voice out her surprise because he sealed her lips with his in a hungry kiss. The look of primal want in his red yes made her break the kiss and moan, but he covered her mouth with his again, taking her breath away. When she also felt his hard thing pressing against her core, she lost all the strength in her legs. The two of them slid against the door together, letting themselves fall slow slowly on the floor. 
but Naruto broke the kiss and cupped her face with his hands. Don't stop. Diana said in a needy voice. Kiss me. Touch me. Take me. A groan of almost painful desire came from his chest at her dirty talking. There was no profanity but simply hearing someone like Wonder Woman, an Amazonian princess, speak like that was turning him on like mad. I want you so bad, Diana. He said with his eyes closed, using all his willpower to keep his inner beast in check. But not like this. Not like a bunch of animals in heat. Not here, in a cold hallway, not while we're covered in grime, blood and filth. He took her lips again and this time his kiss was gentle and slow, but still no less passionate than before. I want our first time to be special. I want to treat you like a princess and worship every inch of your body, like a goddess. I want to make love to you. The words he said made Wonder Woman almost desperately horny. But at the same time, her heart melted. Her burning lust gave way to her warm feelings of love, and she buried her face in the crook of his neck. Man, you really stink. Diana said and, just like that, the fiery mood from before vanished. They burst into laughter and they kept at it until they could no longer laugh. Even when their laughter subsided, they could not wipe their smiles off their faces. In the end, they showered separately. But there was just one bed in the ship. Because of that, three hours after he went to bed, Naruto could still not fall asleep, his bloodshot eyes staring a hole into the ceiling of the ship. The reason for that? A gorgeous Amazon was sleeping draped all over him. For a repressed virgin like him, it was too much stimulation. He was so turned on that it was phys physically painful. I only have myself to blame for not doing it when she threw herself at me. Nevertheless, he did not really regret his decision. It's still better to take things slow. Although Naruto often liked to play fight with Kyuubi and annoy him, he held the fox's advice in very high regard. He's lived for much longer than me. Makes sense he knows more things than I do. He did not think that what he felt for Wonder Woman was just lust. Far from that, especially after spending over ten years married to her in the illusion of the Black Mercy. He loved her so much that it was scaring him. But he understood that realistically, Wonder Woman could not be as invested as he was after just one month of relationship. Because of that, he listened to Kyuubi's advice to take things slower. I want to date her. I want to get to know her better. Just chatting through a video call is nowhere near enough to truly know someone. He did not want to jump over all those steps straight to sex. He did not want their relationship to be based off just physical attraction. I want to be together with her forever. At that thought, he unconsciously tightened his hold on the woman sleeping on his chest. She stirred slightly in her sleep but she did not wake up. One of her legs intertwined with his and she pressed her head deep into his chest, hugging his waist with both of her hands. Wearing only one of his t-shirts and a pair of sweatpants and sticking so closely to him made him nostalgic. He closed his eyes and a smile appeared on his face. Just like before. It was just like in the time when they were married and sleeping together in the same bed, in his dream. At peace, unknowingly, at some point, he fell asleep. A rather abrupt movement shook Wonder Woman awake from her sleep. But she was so tired and the warmth radiating from the body underneath her was so cozy that she fell back asleep in a matter of seconds. No. No. Please not her. Not Thea. Please. Despite being asleep, her sensitive hearing picked up exactly what he said. She woke up instantly. Her first thought was. Who is Thea? But she heard him sleep talking again. Everyone is dead, no. He was not shouting, it was just a quiet mumble, but his forehead was sweaty and his eyes were moving very fast behind his closed eyelids. He was having a nightmare. Naruto, wake up. She said in a whisper and shook him slightly. Wake up, darling. She called out again and shook him a bit harder. He woke with a start, a haunted look in his eyes. But he calmed down when he saw her worried visage. 
Hey, did I wake you up? She nodded. I think you were having a bad dream, and who is Thea, by the way? She asked suspiciously. A smile involuntarily made its way on his face. Are you jealous? What a cutie pie. But you're my first and only girlfriend. You got nothing to be jealous of. I'll tell you more about Thea some other time. Let's just sleep now, okay? He said and kissed the top of her head. After that, he turned around on his side, with his back at her, and tried to sleep. But Diana laid back next to him and hugged him from behind, making him the little spoon. It was such an unexpected gesture from her that he did not know how to react at first. Still, after the ordeal he had gone through that day, he was drained. It did not take long for him to fall back asleep in Wonder Woman's embrace. Good morning, princess. Naruto said filled with energy and turned on the lights in the bedroom. In contrast, Wonder Woman covered herself with the blanket and buried her face in the pillow. Go away. Let me sleep. She whined. But she suddenly threw away her blanket and sat up. You cooked pancakes? Her sleepiness vanished in an instant. Looking at her eager face and at how her messy hair was standing in all directions, he burst into laughter. Yep. I didn't know what you liked to eat for breakfast, so I made you some pancakes with chocolate. He put the, the tray in her lap and poured her a glass of milk too. At first, Diana just eagerly focused on eating, but she started to become embarrassed the longer he kept staring at her. Do you want some too? She asked, hoping that maybe if he ate something too he would stop looking at her with so much intensity. I ate my fill. I made these just for you. He shook his head and said. Who was Thea by the way? The smile on Naruto's face disappeared. We haven't known each other for long. What if she freaks out? He thought. They'd been together for a short while, he was afraid that it was a little too early for him to be mentioning kids in marriage. He was troubled that it would scare her off. I'll tell her. If we're going to spend the next few weeks together, I can't guarantee this subject won't pop up again. Might as well get it out of the way from the start. He sat on the edge of the bed right next to her and leaned with his back against the wall. Remember that tendril you saw wrapping around my neck during our video call? That was a black mercy. I got to experience it firsthand. Wonder Woman put down the pancake and looked at him intensely. There was a worried look on her face. In that dream, my parents, my mentor, my auntie, my friends, they were all alive. He looked at the metallic gray ceiling lost in thought. Before I had this dream, I thought that I had gotten over the loss of my homeworld, family, and friends. It's been almost 100 years since then. You'd think that one's wounds would heal by then, right? But this illusion gave me more than I've ever had, and then it took everything away. Was Thea one of your friends from when you were young? Wonder Woman asked. Naruto took one of her hands in his and said. Thea was my daughter. She was my little princess. The cutest thing in the world. She was just as beautiful as you. But she had my energetic personality. He grinned, grinned to himself in melancholy. You mean to say we were together? Diana asked and Naruto moved his eyes from the ceiling to her. His smile widened when he saw her shy expression, looking down at her lap. Aware of his gaze on her, her face quickly became red, in a matter of seconds. By now, he was smiling from one ear to another. It took all his self-control to not grab her in his embrace and smother the life out of her with his hug. But of course. The Black Mercy showed me my version of paradise. In my dream, we've been married for more than a decade. We named out daughter Thea because we came to an agreement, if our baby was a boy, I would get to choose his name. If it was a girl, you would choose her name. And you named her Athena. Thea was short for Athena. Wonder Woman may have gotten one over him the previous day and teased the hell out of him, but the tables had been turned on her in the present. If yesterday she had driven him almost mad, now it was her turn. 
In his perfect world, we were married. She thought. Unconsciously, she brought her hands to her cheeks and let out a cute squeal. It was only after she heard it herself that she realized what she had done. I take it you're not opposed to the idea? Naruto said. She did not look at his face, but she could practically imagine the shit-eating grin he had just by his voice. Ah, I want to dig a hole and hide myself in it. Naruto took both of her hands in his, and she reluctantly looked at him. At that point, it was not only her face, but her neck and her ears too that were beat red. Don't feel pressured by my dreams. He said seriously. As I told you yesterday, I want us to take things slow. I'm not a builder, but I know that you build a house one brick at a time. I may have spent years married to you in the illusion of the black mercy, but the plant had no real knowledge about you. It was a version of you crafted by my own thoughts. It was not the real you, that's why, I want us to get to know each other better. I don't want this to be just a fling. I want us to be together forever. Diana's embarrassed expression was slowly replaced by a serious, thinking one. Forever is a very long time. Especially for people like us. We don't age. Naruto lightly kissed her knuckles. Yes, forever. As long as you'll have me. I know I'm not the most handsome man around, my face is disfigured. But I will devote my life to protecting and making you happy. You are not disfigured, Naruto. I like you just the way you are. She said and brought a hand to caress the dark and thick whisker-like scars on his cheeks. And I don't need you to protect me. I'm a warrior princess and even a demigoddess. If anything, you're the one who almost died yesterday. I will be the one to protect you. Wonder Woman said, her fingers now pinching his cheek. She closed the distance between their faces and she pressed her lips against his in a chaste kiss. You wanted to take things slow but what you said just now sounded awfully close to proposing. How does that work? She said and giggled. I haven't asked for your hand in marriage yet, okay? His annoyed face only made her giggle harder at him. Shut up and eat your pancake. Yes, yes. Shimak agreed and spread some chocolate on a piece of pancake. But instead of eating it herself, she brought the fork in front of his face. Say, oh. His annoyance melted like a miracle, and he let her feed him. He had eaten his fill before, but how could he deny her when he saw the way her face lit up in happiness when she fed him? Diana herself was not aware of it yet, but she had him wrapped around her little finger. That's it for this reading. Hit like and subscribe for a free ticket pass going to the different worlds of anime fanfictions. Looking forward to having you on board again.